Hi, today we're going to deal with capacitors in series. Let's get cracking. A capacitor is effectively an electronic component that comprises of two metal plates separated by a material known as a dielectric. The dielectric is an insulator. It could be glass, air, polythene, ceramic. Whatever it is, the dielectric gives the capacitor its name. A capacitor stores an electric charge between the two metal plates and charge is measured in coulombs. If we look at the circuit I'm pointing to here, imagine I switch the circuit on, the positive charge from the voltage source deposits itself on this plate of the capacitor and the negative charge deposits itself on this plate of the capacitor. And when this plate is equal to this plate and this plate is equal to this plate, no more current flows in our circuit. Instead, we have a charge built up between the positive and negative plates of the capacitor and that charge is something called an electric field. An electric field exists between the two plates and the electric field stores energy. So capacitors store energy in the form of an electric charge. Some of the terms we're going to be dealing with today Capacitance is measured in farads. The farad is an extremely large measure and it's far more likely that you're going to measure capacitance in microfarads, that's millionths of a farad, or nanofarads, billionths of a farad. We've already mentioned charge, but charge is measured in coulombs and it's given the letter Q. And Q is equal to the amount of current flowing in the circuit times the time, measured in seconds. Voltage is a measure of potential difference, PD. And permittivity is a word you will come across when you're dealing with the capacitors. It's a measure of how well a dielectric intensifies an electric field. The amount of energy stored by a capacitor is dependent really on three things. It's the size of the plates in terms of their surface area. It's the distance between the plates. And it's also the dielectrics. Those three things determine how much charge a capacitor can store. There are two main equations we will use. They are the capacitance times the voltage is equal to the charge. And this can be rearranged very simply to find either charge, voltage or capacitance. And the other one is the amount of energy that's stored by a capacitor. And that can be found by taking half the capacitance times the applied voltage squared. Okay, and that will give you energy, which we all know is measured in joules. Here I have a, a simple series circuit with three capacitors, two microfarads, four microfarads and eight microfarads and we have a potential difference here of 12 volts. The first thing we will find out is the total capacitance of the circuit. Now for a series circuit of capacitors it's the direct opposite of a resistive circuit. So to find total capacitance we use the technique product over sum and we take two capacitors the product of two capacitors divided by the sum of two capacitors first. So I'm going to do four microfarads and eight microfarads. So four times eight divided by four plus eight gives us 32 divided by 12, which is equal to 2.66 microfarads. We can then take this 2.66 microfarads and apply it with the final capacitor. So the total capacitance of our circuit is 1.14 microfarads. And I'll write that at the top here. One thing we have to be aware of is that micro, denoted by this little U symbol here, stands for one millionth. Therefore, to get the correct number, we have to divide 1.14 by a million. 
And when you divide 1.14 by a million, you get 0 0.00000000. 000 114 farads. Next we can find the total charge. Now there's one equation that we deal with capacitors with all the time in terms of charge, voltage and capacitance, and that is C times V is equal to Q. C stands for the capacitance, V stands for the voltage, and Q stands for the charge. So we can find the charge in this circuit by multiplying our total capacitance by the applied voltage. And we find Q is equal to 13 microcoulombs. In a series circuit, Q is a constant. The charge Q is applied equally across all three capacitors. Therefore, the 2 microfarad, 4 microfarad and 8 microfarad capacitors all have a charge of 13.6 microcoulombs applied to them. The thing that changes in a series circuit of capacitors is the volt drop across each capacitor. We can rearrange C times V is equal to Q to make V the subject. V is equal to Q divided by C. We know that Q is a constant, so for each sum Q will not change, it will be this same number. And all we have to do to find the volt drop across each capacitor is divide the value of each capacitor into Q. Let's do that now. We'll start with the 8 microfarad one, V1. The voltage across the 8 microfarad capacitor is equal to Q divided by, and remember capacitance, we just can't take 8, we've got to divide that by a million. one point seven one volts. I will now do the others very quickly, I'll speed up the video and we'll see where we are at the end. So we have 3 volt drops of 1.71 volts, 3.4 volts and 6.8 volts across these capacitors respectively. If we add those volt drops up, we come to approximately, in, my, in this case 11.9 volts. I have rounded things up a bit and up, up down a bit. If you went to say 6 or 7 significant places, you would find that the voltage drop here will equal the applied voltage. There's your check. You have to be, this has to be close to this if you've done it correctly. If you're uh, more than a couple of volts out, you've definitely done it wrong. You need to check your working. The other thing we need to look at is the amount of energy stored by a capacitor. And there is an equation for that. And that is half the capacitance times the applied voltage squared. And we're going to do that for the entire system. So half the capacitance, we know that uh, this is our total capacitance here. So we can go... And that gives us 0 0.0000000. It's minus 7, so it's a decimal place and six zeros. That, that type of rule always applies. If it's minus six, it's a decimal place and five zeros. Minus four, decimal place and three zeros. Yeah. So this is minus seven. It's a decimal place and six zeros. Five seven times 
We know that um, 12 squared is 144. Okay, and we can do that sum very quickly. And the energy stored is 82 microjoules in this system. 82 microjoules. Okay. That is 8.2 times 10 to the minus 5. And that's kind of it. I went through it very quickly, but the same techniques apply for more complex circuits. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me, I'm more than happy to answer those questions for you. Bye-bye.